By now, you must be comfortable with the complex world of equilibriums. Let's now close this discussion by one key topic, that is, Phillips curve. Mr. William Phillip formulated this theory in the previous century and it forms the basis for inflation or unemployment-centric macroeconomics discussions around far from equilibrium situations. Two closely watched indicators of economic performance are inflation and unemployment. The short-run relationship between inflation and unemployment in scenarios where aggregate demand shifts left or right is often called the Phillips curve. In summary, in the short run, economy faces a trade-off between inflation and unemployment. If monetary and fiscal policy makers expand aggregate demand and move the economy up along the short run aggregate supply curve, they can lower unemployment for a while, but only at the cost of higher inflation. If policymakers contract aggregate demand and move the economy down the short-run aggregate supply curve, they can lower inflation, but only at the cost of temporarily higher unemployment. In this discussion, we examine this Phillips curve trade-off more closely. Let's build our discussion on Phillips curve by using aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve. The model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply provides an easy explanation for the possible outcomes described by the Phillips curve. The Phillips curve simply shows the combinations of inflation and unemployment that arise in the short run as shifts in the aggregate demand curve move the economy along the short run aggregate supply curve. Suppose currently AD and AS are at their natural equilibrium and equilibrium price and quantity are P and Q and this equilibrium is represented as point A on the left side curve. Now, suppose because of some wave of optimism, say a real estate boom, the firms and the consumers become optimistic about future potential of the economy. Also assume that the government starts spending heavily to support this momentum. As a result of this optimism, the consumption, investment and government expenditure rises, which manifests into rightward shift of aggregate demand curve from AD1 to AD2, which in turn means that for a given quantity, the economy is now fine with having to pay more prices. And for a given price, the economy is demanding higher quantities. Also, since AS is upward sloping, economy would increase its output to meet this higher demand. That is, since the demand has increased, the firms increase their capacity utilization to meet the higher demand. Mind you, it's just a movement along the AS curve and not a shift in the AS curve. Now, the equilibrium price and GDP is at P1 and Q1. This situation is represented as point B on left side graph. So, in summary, with increase in AD from AD1 to AD2, the equilibrium has shifted to point B from point A. Here, the overall GDP increases from Q to Q1, owing to better capacity utilizations of the firms matching with higher demand from consumers. Also, the prices have also shifted from P to P1, which means there is a higher rate of inflation. Now, Phillips curve maps the inflation levels with the unemployment rates. When AD shifts to the right and meets SRAs at a higher point, the larger capacity utilization by firms and hence larger outputs generates greater employment and thus a lower rate of unemployment, U1. Note, at point A, the level of unemployment is U and it decreases to 
U1 at point B. Interesting, isn't it? We notice that a rightward shift in AD curve leads to higher prices, P2, P1, and hence higher inflation, and lower unemployment, U2, U1. Now suppose, to control this bubble, government starts reducing its expenditure. Central bankers start reducing money supply to reduce consumption and investment. And also, firms and households start feeling the pinch of bubble. The result of this all would be leftward shift in aggregate demand curve along the aggregate supply curve. Assume AD curve despite of landing on its natural equilibrium. Shift even more leftwards to AD2. This decrease in aggregate demand for goods and services leads, in the short run, to a smaller output of goods and services and a lower price level, say P2 and Q2. This situation is represented as point C on the left side graph. Smaller output means lower capacity utilization and hence lower employment and thus a higher rate of unemployment, U2. In addition, the price levels in the next year reaches P2, that is, a lower rate of inflation. So here, we notice that a leftward shift in AD leads to lower price shift from P1 to P2, hence lower inflation and a greater rate of unemployment, U1 to U2. So, the overall conclusion is that shifts in aggregate demand push inflation and unemployment in opposite directions in the short run. This is the relationship illustrated by the Phillips curve. The line joining points A, B, C in left side is called short run Phillips curve, SRPC.